uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to bypass the onboard computer on this golf cart. And you may ask why we're going to bypass the onboard computer and what is the onboard computer? The onboard computer is this little box mounted right here. This is a 1998 Club Car DS with the Regen 2 drive system, sometimes referred to as the PowerDrive Plus drive system. This OBC bypass procedure is the same for all DS cars with the IQ drive system as well. If you have a series drive system, that's going to be another video. You can go ahead and turn this video off. This does not apply to you at all. That's a totally different procedure if you have a series drive system. This is only applicable for the Regen 2 and the IQ system. So this silver box right here is the onboard computer. And what the onboard computer does is it controls the charger. It turns the charger on and off and it provides a signal to the controller to allow the car to run when the charger is unplugged from the vehicle charge receptacle. When you plug the charger in to the vehicle charge receptacle, it removes power from a certain pin in this controller right here and the car won't run. That's what they call solenoid interlock. The solenoid interlock feature will keep the car from running while the car is charging. And it's important to know that once you bypass the onboard computer, that function will no longer work. The reason that we're bypassing this onboard computer is because this customer has opted for a newer smart charger from FSIP. We sold him one of our FSIP Charge Plus chargers. And that charger does not require the onboard computer to be on this car in order for charger control. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get rid of the onboard computer entirely. And we're gonna show you how to do that. The first thing we need to do is we need to unhook the battery power from the controller. So to begin with, we need to put the tow run switch in the tow position, and then take the main positive wire, take the nut off, pull the power wire off of the battery, and set it off to the side. It's not touching anything. Take every wire off of the terminal, then we're going to repeat that step on the main negative over on the other side. All right, all right, so this is the back of the charger receptacle mounted to the body of the golf cart. You need to locate the fuse with the negative wire on it. You'll see this black wire comes out of the back of the charger receptacle down here, hooks to one side of this fuse, and the other side of the fuse has another black wire on it that runs down into the wire loom that runs all the way back to the onboard computer. So you need to find the wire that runs back to the onboard computer, which is this one. Typically, this fuse is connected to the back of this charger receptacle. This particular one is broken, but it works out good for this video because you can see it better. So we're gonna take that loose. This wire right here, this gray wire, this is the sense lead wire. This is the wire that the onboard computer uses to communicate with the factory charger to turn the charger on and off. This wire is not going to be used. So this wire harness here that has the black wire and the gray wire in it run all the way back to the onboard computer. So you can actually take this harness and pull it out. This is what the harness looks like after we get it out. We're going to pull the entire onboard computer off with this harness attached to it. So in the back of the OBC, we need to unplug this six pin connector right here. And we need to take this negative wire off of the controller here. It's best to use two wrenches to keep the head of the bolt from spinning underneath. Take this nut off. Okay, I removed that solenoid to give you guys a better look at what's going on here. This is the back of the onboard computer. Down here, you'll see that mounting bolt right there. You got one on the bottom of it and one on the top. And all you gotta do is loosen those up and slide the OBC over to the left 
and it'll pull right out. Got a zip tie holding it in here. Let's get rid of that. That's it. That's the OVC. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bypass the charger interlock circuit. And this is what a lot of people don't do. And we'll get on that in that topic in just a minute. I'll show you exactly how we do it and why we do it. Okay, so this six pin connector in the back of the OVC was plugged into the vehicle wire harness. This computer is trashed and we're not going to use it. So there's no sense in trying to save any of this stuff to ever try to reuse this OBC in the future. So we're going to cut this plug off completely. All right, let's get this out of the way for now. Now we're stuck with this plug right here. So on the back of this plug, you'll see this cluster of wires. This white wire is where power comes in to the OBC from the wire harness on the car. And then it exits the OBC through this blue wire and goes back to the controller. When there's power on this blue wire, the car will run. When there's power taken away from this blue wire, the car will not run. That's how the OBC keeps the car from running when the charger is plugged into the charger receptacle. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this connector apart if you look down in the bottom of that connector, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's a, uh, an orange, what they call a wedge lock connector down in there. You take a screwdriver and stick it in there and kind of twist it and pull it out. And it goes flying across the room like that. And then you're gonna depin this connector by taking every wire out of it, except the blue and the white. If you look down in there without the wedge lock, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's six little tabs in there that you can stick a screwdriver or this, this is a depending tool that we use. You can stick it down in there and pull the tab over and then pull the wire out. So we're gonna depin this connector. Take the yellow out, just because we don't need these wires. I like for it to be as clean as possible, so I don't like a lot of wiring hanging out under the car if it serves no purpose. That's the reason that I like to remove the entire OBC rather than just have it sitting in the car, not doing anything. There's no point in having it mounted to the car if you're not using it. All right, so now we're down to the green, and I mean the white and the blue. So we'll put the wedge lock connector back in the plug. And that keeps these wires from coming out. Then we're gonna strip these wires back and connect the blue and the white together with a wire connector. And I like to use these butt connectors with heat shrink on them, just so water doesn't get in there and mess up the connection. You can get these on Amazon. All you gotta do is heat them up and they seal on the wire real nice and tight. That's what the jumper looks like when it's finished. And you can plug that back into the wire harness where the OBC was, and you don't have to cut your main harness. Just plug that jumper in, and the car will run without the OBC in place. All right, so the second part of the OBC bypass is to bypass the charging circuit of the OBC. And the charging circuit of the OBC runs through the negative side of the charging circuit. So normally, this black wire 
would have hooked to the back of the charger receptacle and runs all the way back into the back of the OBC and then comes back out to the B negative terminal of the controller, essentially going directly into the battery pack, but it's monitored through the OBC. It goes in and out and it's monitored through the OBC and the OBC can control the charger based on what it detects from that wire. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this loose, this little plastic clip. We're gonna pull this wire loom all the way off, all the way down to the OBC. I'm gonna cut these two wires. Then we're done with the OBC completely. This gray wire is not gonna be used. We can discard that. So this black wire is the wire that was on the charger receptacle. We're gonna put it back on the charger receptacle. Only this time, we're going to crimp a 5 16 ring terminal onto this wire. So we could put it directly on the B negative terminal of the controller rather than going into the back of the OBC. This will give your charger receptacle a direct connection to the battery pack on the negative side. The positive side of the charger receptacle was already like that in factory configuration, so it doesn't require any modifications. So you're only gonna be using two pins of the charger receptacle, the red and the black, and they're both going directly to the battery pack. Okay, this is the black wire that goes to the charger port. I'm gonna put this 5 16 ring terminal on it here and crimp it down. Okay, so now that the OBC has been taken off the car, we're gonna install these pieces back on the car in order to properly bypass the OBC circuit in both the charging and the running circuit. We're gonna start with the six pin jumper that we made. It's gonna plug directly into the wire harness. Okay. Now without doing that, the car won't run. A lot of people leave the OBC on the car and leave the OBC plugged into that. And that technically will work, but if the OBC ever fails in the future, it can keep the car from running. And if you're not using the OBC to control your charger, then why do you even have it? There's no point in leaving the OBC on the car if you're not using it. It's just a failure point that can hurt you down the road. And this is so easy to do Jump these two wires together, and a failed OBC can never keep this car from working. The next thing we're going to install is this six gauge wire. Now, again, a lot of people leave the OBC in place because this wire originally runs through the OBC. We just had a spare wire laying around that we used for this. I know a lot of people don't have that. So if you want to leave the OBC on the car, that's fine just because of this wire, because it runs through that little tiny hole in the OBC. It's hard to get it out without destroying the terminals. So that's okay if you want to leave the OBC on the car for that reason. But we're going to use a piece of wire to replace it with. That's going to go back to the negative battery, and it's going to go to the controller where it came off of before. And then this is the 10 gauge wire that runs to the charger receptacle. This originally ran into the back of the OBC, but we put the ring terminal on it. We're gonna put it on the B negative terminal of the controller with the main six gauge cable here. So we're gonna put these through here. Just like that. And put these nuts back together. Again, make sure to use double wrenches here so it doesn't spin and make sure you get it tight. Okay, that's done. Put this solenoid back up here where it came from. And 
tighten that bracket and we're done back here. Okay, so now we're gonna find this small 10 gauge wire that is now hooked to the controller. And we're going to hook it to the back of the charger receptacle where it came off of earlier. Back when it used to run to the OBC, we're gonna put it back on here, put the nut back on it. Tighten it up, and that is it for that wire. And we're going to put the negative wire back on the battery. We're going to do the same with the positive. We're going to flip the toe switch to run. Solenoid clicks. That's a good sign. An IQ car is not going to do that, by the way. The just a regen car is going to do that. Turn the key on. Put it in forward. Press the accelerator. See if it runs. It does. So our OBC bypass procedure at least we know half of it works. We got the car running without the OBC on the car. That's what the six pin jumper does. Without that, the car would not run. So we're gonna try a smart charger in the charger receptacle to see if the charge circuit works. This is our FSIP Charge Plus charger. This is a really cool charger. It's kind of a universal charger. It'll work on 12 volts, 36 volts, or 48 volts. There's a series of switches underneath this sticker for you to set up what mode you wanna put it in. We've got this one set up for 15 amps at 48 volts. It comes with this SB50 connector and you can order any kind of pigtail you want to to plug into this SB50. We've got the club car three pin pigtail on it. So we're gonna plug this directly into our charger receptacle, which is now bypassed. The OBC is bypassed and the charger receptacle now runs directly to the battery pack. So we're gonna plug that in. And if you look at the screen on the charger, this, it tells you how many amps it's putting into the battery pack. So it's gonna start off slow fan turns on it, it increases. All right, 15 amps. This charger is working. So we can put the access door back on the, the body, put the cargo box back on the car, and we can charge it overnight, and we can call the customer, and he can come pick this car up tomorrow. That's all there is to it. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact us.